New Year again to people that have watched my channel before and Happy New Year and welcome to all the new subscribers that have come on board in the last couple weeks. I've done a lot of videos, a lot of videos that are pretty high profile, end of the year, um, best of 2023, and then the vinyl tag that all of us are doing. This one is something I've done in the past. I call it memory ticket. I just grab concert tickets of shows that I've been to at random and from a big bag I have here and talk about them. Um, you're probably going to see it in the title, but I'm doing this live and you probably will hear my cats in the background too. Uh, but I'm going to draw two tickets and talk about the shows. So the first one, and unfortunately, you know, these are not from the last 10 years because everything's digital and that's just not as fun. Um, trying to, I don't know, search all the event brights and ticket masters and try to print some ticket that probably is long lost. So we are with physical prop, physical um, medium of paper, which we like physical products here for the most part on this on this um, in this vinyl community. So the first one I've got my hands on it. I've not looked yet. Is ah oh, good. I get to talk about Vic. Oh, interesting. I was just thinking about this. My friend, the long cut, was talking about uh, the Pernice Brothers and it reminded me of Scud Mountain Boys. This is a really, really interesting show, March 24th, 1997. It's interesting for the most, most important thing is that, well, Vic Chestnut never showed up. I'm a huge Vic Chestnut fan, but he disappeared. He, uh, he ran away or he, he got mad, got in an argument with his wife. I've heard different stories about this in more recent years. But apparently, he got mad at his wife and took off. Um, and he didn't show up for, for the show, which is kind of a big deal. And Scud Mountain Boys, who later, Joe Pernice, went on to form Pernice Brothers, definitely great alt-country band. Um, their album, Massachusetts, is amazing. But they were left to kind of carry the load. And as much as I really wanted to see Vic, and I'd seen him a couple times before this and would see him a couple times, at, more than a couple times afterwards, um, I was absolutely thrilled that the Stud Mountain Boys just played forever. They just were an opening act. All they had to do is just probably, you know, do their opening set, and then everybody would be kind of twiddling their thumbs wondering when Vic was going to show up. But instead, they just kept playing, and they played and played and played, and they probably played those two albums, uh, Pine Box, I think, and uh, Dancing a Night Away that came out before. Maybe we even heard some early versions of Pernice songs. But I do remember it being super, super cool in the main room, First Avenue, Minneapolis, Vic Chestnut and Scud Mountain Boys. And I used to get just a tons of, ton of comps to First Avenue. They um, closed in, uh, what, 2004, I think? And they remodeled with a different, or they, they reopened with new owners and a totally different mentality. And now they're extremely successful, probably not giving out the amount of comps they used to give out back in the 90s. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm going to do one more here. This is, okay, it's a shinier surface. I'm guessing it might be like a Ticketmaster, old ticket maybe. Ticket fly. Ah, okay. An evening with Patterson Hood. So we're continuing kind of the alt country sort of uh, theme of, of today. Saw so him at the chapel in San Francisco. Okay, so this is just over 10 years ago, which seems crazy to me that that was 10 years ago. But anyway, I saw Patterson Hood solo at the chapel. I've seen him a few times. The highlight is probably when I saw him with Mike Cooley. Just unbelievably good um, trading, trading songs as the... Uh, as the, I want to say Glitter Twin, uh, I, will, I will post the name of what they go by above me, um, but it was just a really, really cool show. This was great too, 2013, so I saw them, I saw them do the show that ended up being um, It's Great to Be Alive, the live concert record from Drive By Truckers, but this was December 6, 2013, I think he, I think that might have been in 2014 when that was done. So I don't, unfortunately, remember too much about this. Patterson's always good live. The Chapel is a really cool venue in San Francisco. It used to be a mortuary. Really good sound in there. Saw Robin Hitchcock there. Saw um, Jay Farrar there. Saw um, Flaming Groovies there and, and several other bands. And I, I kind of miss that place now that I live in Seattle. But anyway, Patterson Hood is always great to see live. You know, I know he plays around the West Coast quite a bit because he lives in, um, in Oregon now, Portland. Um, you get a lot, a good taste of his solo material. I just listened recently. My girlfriend has 
uh, Heat Lightning Rumbles in the Distance. I listened to that recently and really, really liked it. It sounded very fresh to me. I hadn't heard it in a couple of years. Sorry for the cat noise. Um, yeah, normally I would cut this out, but I'm trying to be quick with this one. I've done a lot of videos recently. I'll keep the cat noise. Uh, Patterson Hood usually does a lot of new songs. He did songs off of probably off that record, which is, I think, the best record that he did solo. I don't think he has a, feels the need to do solo records anymore because um, Drive By Truckers are in such a good place. But he's always good live, no matter if he goes by Drive By Truckers or he's with Mike Cooley or if he just is by himself. So pretty quick video here. I just want to talk about... Uh, Turns out these two shows, I like how they're kind of tied together under at least the alt country manner. And yeah, crazy that I thought of, that I picked this Gun Mountain Boys one because it, it did cross my mind recently as well. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. More to come.